Well, welcome to class one of the Engineering Dynamics course companion. We're dealing with kinematics of particles, and this is the chapter slash class in rectilinear motion of particles. I'm Newt Dog, and this is my buddy Wormy, and we're here to be your course companions in dynamics. So let's get started. The bottom line up front for today, uh, we have these fundamental and uh, fundamental kinematic relationships, right? So these are things that you really want to memorize and understand. And so we want to define velocity as the time rate change of position. And you notice these little arrows on top, these are vectors. Yeah, vectors, you remember that from statics. We also can have acceleration, and acceleration can be written in a couple different ways. One of them is the time rate change of velocity, we know that. We could also be the second derivative uh, with respect to time of the position, or Here's the wild card over here. It could be velocity times the position derivative of velocity. That's an interesting one that comes up. And so we're dealing with a rectilinear motion, which means motion along a straight line, right? So uh, we can kind of treat these things not necessarily as vectors right now. Now they're going to be scalars, although they could be positive and negative. And uh, other ways to write the velocity uh, might be x dot. We use a dot notation to say it's the uh, time derivative of position. We're using x as the position. Um, and then um, note that we could have x double dot. That means the second derivative of position. And uh, you can see that the other, uh, the other derivatives are right in there. So that's really what we're covering today. So the idea here, uh, something that's just intuitive to you, if you want to get the speed of something, right, you take the, uh, the difference between uh, where it starts and uh, at some point, and with a stopwatch, if you're like rolling, in this case, Newt Dog is rolling Wormy's apple here. Um, if you take a stopwatch at the beginning and the end, and you take that uh, distance moved and divide it by uh, that stopwatch time, you'll get the average speed, right? Um, and uh, so the start, and so that that's the average speed right there, right? But we know that if we take and make smaller, smaller, smaller increments, oh, okay, we could also have the average acceleration. I should have pointed that out too. So that if we uh, figure out what that uh, what the speed is at any given moment, and we uh, uh, subtract the delta of that, divide the delta of that by the delta of time, we'll also get acceleration. But we want to get like the instantaneous. Uh, of velocity or the speed if it's only the magnitude of the thing by taking instead of a delta we take d for small increments you all know all this so this is all just review things for you uh, probably because you, you probably had this in calculus um, it's a, a, a classic uh, one, one this is one of the main uses of calculus right here is uh, dynamics and we also have the second derivative and we also have the uh, instantaneous velocity there where uh, as I mentioned in the bottom line up front we have a, a different um, acceleration uh, using instead of the time rate change the position change of velocity but there's also another velocity in there what we'll often do with the fundamental uh, kinematic relationships is we will uh, try to find, uh, you know, we'll have some kind of function, right? So we, we will uh, have like maybe acceleration is, the, is a function of time. So what we could do is we could write out that fundamental uh, kinematic equation, but we could rewrite it out. So we move uh, dt over here from here down to the other side. Now we can integrate that. Right, so we integrate, and uh, we can get um, that uh, the integral of n. Now this will be some function, so we'll have to use uh, our calculus again and find some integration. But we can rewrite a new equation uh, that relates um, uh, velocity uh, to, uh, to to time. And now um, we can also uh, do the same thing with that wild card uh, acceleration. When it, acceleration is a function of position, we can um, put uh, the dx over onto the other side right here. And now we can integrate both of these and we're able to come up with uh, whatever the integral of whatever this kind of function is right here, but it's gonna be equal to one half v squared minus v naught squared or the original uh, velocity squared. 
Um, now, sometimes, uh, like the, uh, if the acceleration is a function of the velocity instead, we, can, we could use the, uh, we have case 3.1, we'll call it. Um, we can if time is the thing that's going to be desired if we if this is the relationship that we know somehow we can use um, this and uh, th this relationship right here rewrite it uh, in this way so now we have time over by itself over to the side and we have the the dv and then we've subdivided it by the uh, acceleration um, as a function of velocity so now because it's over there on the same side, we can go ahead and integrate that. Um, and so we can get what the delta T is gonna be. And uh, you'll notice that uh, this is on the denominator. So sometimes we'll have to look up integration tables to try to do that more difficult uh, type of integral. Um, if position is desired, once again, this is the case where we know that acceleration is a function of velocity, uh, then we can use this fundamental kinematic equation rewrite it uh, so we could get the uh, all the velocities over on the right hand side and position on the left hand side and integrate it and we will have now uh, the what the delta x is going to be equal to so here's an example where we have the acceleration of an object is approximated by this function right here so we can see that acceleration is a function of position right so if we come back uh, to the ones that we have up here, um, that would be uh, this case right there, right? So this is what we're going to do in that, uh, in the case in this example. Okay. Uh, so uh, we know um, that, that we're, the units are meters per second squared and meters respectively. And we, have, we, we know at some reference point at time zero, the stopwatch at the beginning, um, the position uh, is zero and the uh, velocity is 10 meters per second, and it's positive, right? Um, we wanna find the time when the object is in a position where x is equal to 40. So this sounds like it could be a simple problem, but it is a little bit more complicated uh, than when you start to go to uh, try to solve it. So let's kind of use this uh, approach, the case two, as I've mentioned right here. Um, we take that and we rewrite the thing, and then we integrate, right? So let's go ahead and stick that function in there for the acceleration, right? We put that right into here, and this is the uh, integral that we're left with. And we do the integrals of these, not too terribly difficult. And now we have, a, and, and I have uh, left this velocity right here as a variable. Right? And I've also left this x as a variable because we want to have an equation that describes uh, what the motion is like, right? So the, we can, we, now we know the velocity at any given position. Remember though that we're looking for the time, right? So we're, in, we're, we're not, not there yet. This, this is not a one step problem, right? So um, we can now, we could take, uh, because uh, we want to get time, we know that the velocity and position are related this way uh, to time. So we could rewrite this where we have t the, the dt is equal to that position divided by that velocity right there, right? Um, but uh, when we stick into this velocity, this guy right up here, we put him back in, we see that's kind of a difficult integral. So we might need to look this up or we can maybe use Wolfram Alpha or some other method, um, you have to be real careful. And it, I went to this integral uh, table.com and I found this form, right? So now what we need to do, uh, um, so, so you could see how that right there looks like this form. And it's a little bit of a complicated uh, solution right there. So you have to be kind of careful with uh, the matching what the variables are. Um, so we went ahead, I went ahead and, and put those in there. And uh, here's, the, here's an equation right here, right? So just to, to take a moment here and take a look that we have uh, three equations now. Right? We have acceleration as a function of position, we have velocity as a function of position, and now after this manipulation that we've gone through, we have time as a function of position. Right here, right? 
So um, we were asked in the original problem the time when uh, it was at a particular position. So we could just put in um, that 40 right here, right? So that was, we wanted to know the time when it was 40 meters and we'll find out that it's 1.854 seconds. Now, a really good idea is to, uh, to graph uh, this uh, together. So here's our three equations, then they're all functions of position. So let's just take a string of positions, and we could do this in a spreadsheet, um, and we can find what the acceleration is by just uh, using this equation and putting it in there with the variable of position. We could find the velocity. We could also find the time. Now, quite often when we plot something, we want to do it per time. So what we could do is just plot position versus time here, right? And we could have velocity versus time and acceleration versus time. And then taking a look at our um, point, we get a full picture of what's taking place. So this is the mindset, and this is the real difficulty, right, Wormy? Right. This is the real difficulty uh, when doing uh, dynamics problems is that you don't know how the how the problem is going to work out when you start out, um, and it's really easy to look at a solution and go, "Okay, I understand that." It's much more difficult to have a problem in front of you and then to navigate through. So hopefully I've described some of the thought, pro thought processes that you need to go uh, to be able to uh, solve a problem like this or similar to this. Um, so I would advise you to uh, take some other examples and uh, cover up the solution to it and try them out until you get to an answer and then take a peek and see uh, if you got the right answer or not. And if you didn't, try to try to get an understand, get an idea of where you went wrong. And by doing multiples of these, you'll get better and better at becoming a problem solver. So for more examples, please check out the um, Engineering Dynamics Course Companion. It's located, uh, the link is located down in the description. Um, and uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel because there's going to be a lot more uh, videos coming soon. Thank you.